All right. Yeah. Thank you for spending your lunch hour or uh, post lunch hour with us. Um, my name is Matt. We're going to go through a few things here. Uh, but the goal of this is to talk about how we can maximize our investment uh, with real, real time tool validation. So, just a uh, quick introduction, uh, a quick agenda for us. Uh, we're going to do a just quick introduction. Uh, we're going to talk about why we should uh, maximize our investments. Uh, I think we all probably know why. Um, I'm just going to hit a few statistics. Uh, I'm going to go over uh, polarity, uh, just you know, what is it, how, do, how does it help, and then talk about um, how using automation and, and federated search can help maximize those budgets. Uh, feel free to ask questions throughout, uh, but we will have time at the end as well. So just quick about me. Um, my name is Matt. I uh, run our field engineering team. I've uh, been in IT and security for over 25 years. There's a lot of gray in the beard that doesn't show up in that picture. Uh, Love coffee. I'm based out in a uh, Salt Lake area, uh, so uh, lots of mountains. Uh, and starting a little uh, known movie called Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um, so let's talk about why we need to maximize our investments, right? Why do we need to 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 use the tools, the 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 people, the teams we have now, right, uh, to their fullest capacity? Well, in a recent uh, survey, 76% of security teams said that they can't hit their goals because they're understaffed, right? Uh, globally, I believe there's over 3.2 was it 3.2 million uh, open cyber positions, right? So uh, not only right are folks having a hard time uh, uh, finding the right staff, right, but maintaining that staff can be very very difficult. Um, in another survey, 74% of CISOs had team members quit last year due to on the job stress, right? This goes in with uh, probably leads to one of the other findings in that survey where 94% of uh, the CISOs uh, interviewed said that they had uh, a significant work-related stress, right? So when you think about the turnover of teams, right, uh, the the difficulty that folks have have maintaining that, um, and then just the stress of the people who are, who are there still, right? Not even just the people who left, but the the member team members who are still there, uh, that can be very difficult. And 93% of the CISO surveyed said that they spend more time on tactical tasks, right? They're uh, uh, being reactive. They're not able to be proactive and do steps to keep the business safe, right? They're just putting out fires nonstop, right? So uh, these are the things that, um, again, more tools, things of that nature aren't necessarily always the right answer. You have, you've invested in these tools. Let's see how can we help maximize that. So with that, I'm going to go through just a quick polarity overview. Uh, many of you may have seen this before. Um, if not, um, uh, again, ask any questions along the way. So one of the things we see, again, is teams have too many sources to search and not enough time, right? They have SIM tools, SOAR tools, file shares. Depending on the, the, the team and their mission, right, uh, they may use open source intelligence tools as well, right? And on those teams, you'll have folks who are very, very thorough, but they take a long time. Right. In a, a, a CrowdStrike report a few years ago, um, a Russian adversary was able to move laterally in an environment within 18 minutes and uh, 54 seconds. Right. So for those folks who are slow, right, they may miss it. The, per the, the adversary, you know, the, the threat actor may have already moved into their environment, right, may have shifted. Um, and then you have those users who are very, very quick, right? They just make decisions from their gut but they miss significant things, right? Um, you know, hey, we need to knock this uh, system off the internet. Um, and you're like, cool, that's our, our, our file server. That's our web server. We really don't want to lose access to that, right? Um, so the desired state is to try to get somebody who's also very thorough, um, but also very quick. And that's where polarity comes in. Uh, so again, knowledge and data is spread across all of these different disparate systems. We fuse that together in one unified view. And so just to hit on some of the challenges again, it takes a long time to discover data, right? I have to log into multiple data sources. I have to go into my SIM tool, you know, look through all my logs. I have to go through my, my source tool, say, hey, have we responded to this? Have we made an action? I have to look at my file share, look at my ticketing system. Does somebody else already working on this? Uh, I know, you know, throughout my career, I'd be working on something and then somebody come up to my desk and be like, oh, I already solved that. And I'm like, oh, I just wasted, you know, an hour of my life. <laughs> Uh, you know, not looking at other tickets because you didn't update a ticket or create a ticket, right? You, you ran with it without letting anybody know. Um, we also have issues with disparity of information, right? So maybe I have multiple threat intel platforms and one or two of them say, hey, this may be uh, malicious. And another says, no, it's benign. 
Um, if I only look at, at one of those, I'm dealing with something without the full context. We also see knowledge silos across teams, right? So your senior folks may know, hey, we store this data in this ticketing system, but we store these files over here in this file share. And um, you know, when this alert pops up, here's the runbook for it. But maybe newer folks on the team don't know where to look. And so again, they're operating with that, that full visibility. And we don't always have the, the, the insights into the platforms we have, right? So um, which tools are working for us? Which ones are bringing value to the team? Which ones are allowing us to really uh, respond to incidents very quickly um, to try to get more proactive, right? Um, you know, and which tools are just uh, falling short? And this is where polarity comes in, right? We give you immediate knowledge delivery across all of your different platforms, right? And enabling the team members to work with both speed and thoroughness. Uh, we fuse all the data into one unified view. And I'm going to show this when we jump into the uh, 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 system to look at how we can maximize that. We also up-level the team. So we have collaboration built in so that your senior folks can build in runbooks, can build in notes, add things, and allows the junior people to really... Um, uh, operate at a much higher level, much more quickly. I can also give you insights into the different tools, right? Which ones are delivering value? Which ones are, are responding quickly? Um, you know, it, it allows your, your entire team to search across all of the tools you've already made the investments in uh, at the same level. So how does this work, right? We're not replacing any of the tools you've invested in. We work with all the SIM tools, the endpoint tools, the vulnerability management tools, your ticketing tools and knowledge management, right? We connect to all of those. And I like to think of it almost as a reverse data lake. We're not storing your data long-term. We reach into these different tool sets, we search for them, and then we tell you about the information very quickly in our, our, our platform. And this allows you to really maximize the investment in your team, right? Um, you know, working with a, a, a CISO recently, they said it was, you know, we're, we're moving out of the stone age, right? We're not just hunting and gathering data anymore, right? We're actually spending the time working. And new employees, when they come in, instead of just learning where everything is, they're able to operate much more efficiently because they're searching the same platforms, the same tools at the same level that the senior folks are searching. And that's enabled by our integration platform, where we have 200 integrations out of the box. Uh, and not all of them are obviously on this page, but we work with all the major technology partners, all the tools you're already invested in, your team is working on to allow you to bring that into one view. We also give telemetry and analytics around this, right? How, how many searches are we doing, right? Um, how much time could we be saving? Which tools are responding with which types of data? Um, you know, so I can really understand where, you know, um, should we reinvest? Where should we add more um, uh, investment? And where do we need to maybe tweak it? And this is giving you that ROI on the tools, right? So you don't always know which tools are, are being used uh, which tools the team is really finding the value in. And with this telemetry, we were able to understand that based on, on quantitative data. We also helps remove bottlenecks and enable tool adoption, right? You may have invested in some really great tools and your team just doesn't know how to use it, doesn't know how to search it, or you've had some turnover. Uh, again, like uh, again, the 74% the of CISOs out there who, who've um, lost a team member in the last year and this allows your team to everybody be searching at the same level, see what tools they're using, and really see that uh, return on the investment they've made. With that, we're going to look at the, the tools and see how does automating and federating the search help maximize the investments in these different platforms. And again, any questions, uh, please let me know. So with this, I'm actually going to grab this data that's sitting out here, right? Just like I was working in a, a, a security operations center and some notes had come in, and I'm going to search for that. And I'm going to do that in the Polarity platform. Right here, I have a little client that sits on my desktop, and it can go up and down. It doesn't have to always sit there. Um, and I'm going to search for these in the search bar. The cool thing is it takes very, very little time for folks to get uh, onboarded and use it because it's a search bar. Everybody knows how to use that, right? When I hit enter here, Polarity goes out and searches over 60 different uh, integrations that I have turned on and brings back information for me, including notes from my team. Right here, you can see we have an investigation going on. This website's part of it. Even though it had been defanged, I'm able to search for it. And I see that there was a note from my teammate that said, hey, this is under investigation. Then an updated note, hey, this domain is bad and is now being blocked, All right? That's great. I can move on now and start working on another ticket. Right. So when you think about the number of cases that we're able to get through into it in a day, we can dramatically improve that number. 
But I can look through all of these different little tabs here in the, the summary tabs and get some information. But I could also dive deeper if I wanted to and look at these in a summary view. So maybe I'll come down here and look at this uh, hash that we looked at. When I look at that hash and I dive into virus total, I can see uh, one of the, it's only been flagged once in the last little bit. But I can look through maybe my ticketing system, Jira, Confluence, ServiceNow, you know, whatever ticketing system I use. And I can see, hey, has anybody opened a case on this? Right. And I see it's part of an investigation for, for fraud, for spear phishing in an endpoint event. Okay. That's something I may need to look into. We also have analytics built into the system. So I can look in the last hour and see, hey, how many times have we searched for this? Who on my team has searched for this? Which data sets have brought back data uh, around this? And one of the most important ones, when was the first time we saw this? And this is a huge thing. When I'm looking, if I investigate something and I'm the, it's the first time that anybody on my team has seen this, it's something that tells me I need to really dive into this, right? But if I see, hey, um, you know, Joe logged in and saw that has been working on this already, I can reach out and say, hey, Joe, let me know if you need any help with this, right? Through an integration like Slack here, where I could just take the note and just reach out to Joe, or I can add a note very quickly here, where I can say, um, uh, let's do this to this to an investigation that we're working on, right? And let's say it's investigation 42. Um, let me know if you need help, Joe. Right? I can take that note, send it to my team, and then he'll be able to let me know if, if he needs any assistance on it. Right. So that ability to communicate with the team, take notes, add, add capability is really, really powerful. And I can keep looking here and I can see, hey, a new CV, a new vulnerability popped. And hey, we're not impacted, we're clear. Perfect. If I wanted to, though, I could take a little deeper dive and see that, hey, this is part of CISA's known exploited vulnerabilities. I can look at a, an integration like Exploit Finder, where we search the top exploit sites to let us know if there's any uh, proof of concept code out there, right? And very quickly, I can see, hey, there's a good bit of it, right? Um, I can look and see in the different uh, SIM tools, right? Whether I have Splunk, Elasticsearch, Devo, Microsoft Sentinel, Google's you know, Chronicle, um, all of those you know, I have uh, uh, built in. I can look at Recorded Future and see, hey, this has got a pretty bad risk score. We probably need to dive into this. And it's not just the client that we have. We also have a capability to do this through web search. And one of the really cool things about our web search capability, again, you can do it from a tablet, from a phone. You can also take this and add it into any of your dashboards. So and throw it into a Splunk dashboard, an Elastic dashboard, whichever, um, it's very easy to, to add it to your own platforms. So if I just go search, I'm going to look up Google's uh, uh, DNS real quick, right? And again, this could be anything. And I have searched 65 different data sets, 38 brought back information for me. So the hidden time savings there is all the tools that I didn't have to look at to bring, you know, to, to, to just spend the time, uh, waste that time, right? The other thing here is the junior folks that come in, right? The new people that we're bringing up, right? The interns, the folks that may not know how to search Elastic and Microsoft Sentinel and Splunk, right? All of that here, we're searching at the same level now. I have a note from my team here. We don't use this. Someone's trying to get around our proxy, right? So again, that indicator, that run book, hey, this is not part of our, our, our normal uh, uh, tool set, right? Our normal infrastructure. So if I see it very quickly, I can dive in. And if I just go look through some of these uh, tags and dive, dive into the details, I can get information from Abuse IPDV, CrowdStrike, the source solutions out there, right? So if I wanted to, I could even go act on this and say, hey, this is part of a botnet. So does that full two-way communication? So when you think about, hey, we've already deployed a SOAR, we've deployed um, you know, these threat intel platforms, right here, I can maximize that value, right? I can go through and say, hey, not only am I able to act on it very, very quickly, I'm able to see, have we ever seen this before? Do we have events? Have we run any playbooks against this, right? Um, and again, the, those source analytics that are key in telling me, hey, have we ever seen this before? What tools have seen it and who's acted on it? And this is for anything I'm looking at, right? Again, let's look at a, a new CVE here. So I grab the CVE. I'm gonna hold a hotkey really quickly because I played a lot of StarCraft, I love my hotkeys. And right here, I can see this is part of that investigation that we've been running. And right here, I have notes for my team. We need to patch. We've patched it, acknowledged, but let's double check. Okay, that's interesting. So here, if I hit on CISA's known exploited vulnerabilities, I can see, you know, what does this affect? Uh, Windows uh, uh, Crypto API, okay. 
I can see, do we have any tickets maybe in Confluence or Jira, right? I can go to uh, Rapid7 and see, hey, this has high attacker value. And Recorded Future gives me that bad risk score. I can go to one of our other platforms. And again, all of this is happening very, very quickly from one unified view, right? Um, in uh, uh, one of the studies I read recently, right, 57% um, of CISOs said that, that by consolidating multiple security technologies onto a single platform, they would decrease their work-related stress significantly, right? So right here, you know, I'm helping all those CISOs out, right? Hey, I've decreased your stress for you. Um, but I can also come in and say, hey, you know what? How do I patch this? Or if I'm part of a red team or you know, I have the pen test team, I could say, how do I exploit this? Right? I put the, the CV in there, add the question mark. And one of the cool things we've added recently is an ability to, to reach out to a large language model. In this case, ChatGPT. Normally, our integrations take less than a second to respond. Uh, ChatGPT, just based on the type of technology, takes anywhere from 5 to 15 seconds. Right here, you can see I have all the steps I need to take. So when you think about up-leveling your team, right? We've made the investment in these people. Now we're giving them the tools that they need to be able to really act quickly and reduce the workplace stress that they have. And if I wanted to, depending on my, my organization, I can say, hey, does this impact operational technology, right? Or uh, industrial control systems um, or any of the type of technologies we have internally, right? So without having to go spend a significant amount of time externally, like searching for all these things, right here in the platform, I'm able to ask these questions and say, hey, you know, it does. It just depends if they're using this uh, a system that is impacted by this Windows Crypto API. And everything I've shown so far, this is just me actively going out and searching. Now I'm going to show how automated search can really reduce uh, uh, your time and increase your ability for um, maximizing your, your, the tools you have. Right here, I have a new cyber advisory from CISA, right? And as I'm investigating this, when I go into one of our automated research modes, uh, this one is called Stream, Polarity is recognizing the pixels on the screen and is letting me know if I have any additional context here. So right here, you can see that I've searched, you know, I didn't have to go out and know about any of these tools. I didn't have to know any of this data was here. And right here, Polarity is telling me, hey, there's a bunch of known exploits that you may need to look at, right? And as I scroll down here, you know, I'm looking at them. One of my teammates took a note and said, hey, we don't use Exchange. So very quickly, I can move on, right? I've, you know, the investment in our people, investment in that, that, that search capability is, is uh, returned a lot of value there. One of our other automated research modes, it's called Highlight. And with Highlight, again, we're recognizing the pixels on the screen. And this works in Windows, Mac, and Linux, full capabilities across all of them. Right here, I am going to point out I'm reading a report that came in. I'm going to say that this is, you know, again, very, very fake. Um, but as I, I move it, you're seeing that we are able to, again, recognize those, those pixels. And I come in and say, hey, this is a known threat actor. Oh, well, what's ROSTEC? It's on the U.S. sanctions list. Okay, that's not great. Uh, what's oil rig? Um, it's an Iranian threat actor. So we have the full MITRE attack framework built into the solution as well. So the groups, the tactics, the techniques, again, just that up-leveling that team, maximizing the value that we have here. And as I keep scrolling down, I see that a conversation happened at an internet cafe. I have a latitude and longitude here. Uh, and I see a note to take a look at it. And right here, I, we have mapping capabilities built into the solution. Right? So all of that is there. And this is any application I'm looking at. So if I pop out and I look at Wireshark, for example, if you're not familiar with Wireshark, uh, it shows me network conversations. Right? So right here, I see that uh, there's an IP that got highlighted and I hover over. And one of my teammates took a note on it and says, hey, don't engage. This appears to be a command and control. Okay, that's not great. Well, who's it talking to? So I get to this, this IP, and it's one of our internal systems that hosts credit card data. Well, that's really bad. We're probably going to fail our PCI audit here. Um, or, you know, depending on your organization, maybe, you know, RMF or CMMC, any of the uh, GDPR, right? Any of the different auditing you have. But very, very quickly, I was able to determine that without having to go and spend a bunch of time researching it, Right. All of those wasted cycles that burn people out are taken care of now. We also have an automated search mode called Focus, and I use Focus all the time. Uh, it would have saved me a lot of gray in my beard uh, early in my career when people would send me screenshots of IPs or hashes and say, hey, can you take a look at this? And I would have to hand type them all out. Um, I got very good at uh, uh, typing out IPv4. Now with IPv6, uh, it would be a whole nother world. Right here, I'm going to focus on a part of my screen. And when I do that, Polarity has algorithms built in that take each individual component out and searches across all of my different data sets. So as a leader, I don't have to worry that my team is missing 
data, missing context by not looking in all the right places, right? Here, they've searched everything. And I can come in and look and say, hey, we have a document in, in Google Drive or Microsoft SharePoint, right? I can see, you know, hey, we have results in Splunk. I can see who else on my team has looked at this, right? And I see there's a number of us here who've looked at it. Um, and I can dive in there. I also, though, I want to write a report on this, right? Reporting is a big issue that, uh, that I see that people aren't, aren't taking notes or, or adding all the information. Right here, I can come in, I can paste this data in, and you see that Polarity OCRs the data out for me. So if somebody sent me an image, I can pull this out. This can save a mountain of time if somebody sends you a PDF that you can't copy out of, right? Just being able to focus on it and pull that text out is huge. And you can see, even though this is an image, right, the Polarity highlight mode is able to search it. So whatever you're looking at, you're going to be able to get that context and that confidence in the decision you make. And it, still, it also works for foreign languages, right? Um, I don't read Cyrillic, uh, but I can guess this is about Superman, right? So just grabbing a, a paragraph here, I'm going to do a quick search, right? And so my team now is no longer having to pivot out and change, you know, see moving back and forth between tabs. Right there, the, the uh, translation is done for me. And if I wanted to, I can keep hunting right here in the, in the client. Grab Jerry Siegel. And I search for that. Hey, I can go look up some YouTube videos if I wanted to, right? And say, hey, oh, it's Superman. That makes sense, right? Same thing if I'm looking at a ticket, right? Here, I'm in uh, a highlight mode, right? But even then, maybe I want to even speed it up faster. And I'm going to go to focus mode. And I'll say, hey, just tell me about the, the IP addresses, right? All of that there, right? Clarity, again, has those algorithms that search across all of my different data sets and lets me know. And very quickly, those notes from my team come in very, very handy. Hey, we've already loaded it. It's clean now, right? And this was our CSO's laptop. So that is something that having that context about what is the system being impacted is huge. Uh, also, if I come in here and, you know, there's a bunch of hashes. And normally, if I'm looking at these hashes, it would take me a significant amount of time, right? I'm going to have to grab each one out and search for it. But with focus, I'm just going to use my hotkeys again. Grab all of them search across all of my different data platforms here, right? And get information from my team. Hey, this is interesting, needs more research. Hey, we ran a sort playbook, it's resolved, fantastic. So I, you know, again, I'm not having to recreate the wheel. I'm maximizing my investment in my people here. But I also know that, hey, these are all these tools are bringing back information for me. When I look at Mandy in here, I can see, hey, they've given this a score of 90, right? Scroll down just a little bit. I can see Recover Futures giving it a, a, a score of 72. We may want to do a double check on this and say, hey, okay, we see this. Let's run another playbook now, right? And let's just go hunt for this, right? Maybe we'll go in and we'll run a malware hunt and contain playbook, right? So just in case, hey, we've cleaned one of the laptops up, but maybe let's see if it's on any other system. And all of that's done for me right here with high confidence because I have multiple sources telling me that this is bad. Uh, I'm going to give just a quick heads up here. This is malware, so please don't go to out, out to any of these websites. I uh, don't want anybody being impacted by this. Uh, right here, you see I have some of the highlights popping up for me. As I mentioned before, we have the MITRE ATT&CK framework built in. We also have the living off the land binaries built in. So right here, I can see, right, here's the project. If I wanted to, I can pivot out from here. I can also see it, the attack technique that they take. Uh, I see that it ran a PowerShell command. Uh, if I hover over, right, uh, I see I have my only teammates take, took a, a PowerShell note. I always add the dash E to encode my PowerShell. Um, yeah, just as a note, that's probably not always best practice. Uh, but as I come down and scroll down here, I see another note. Hey, it means the dash E is encoded, day is encoded. That's cool. Uh, what do I do about that? Well, if you see this, right, highlight it and run it in Polarity or CyberChef or Base6040Code.org, whichever uh, you'd like. So if I grab that information, right, do a quick uh, search for it, you can see that we have CyberChef built in, right? So again, instead of me taking all that time pivoting, right, I'm maximizing my time. Um, and, and instead of me having to grab each of these components out, right, and search each of them and spending a significant amount of time, all of a sudden I search it, Polarity's algorithms take it all apart for me, search each component across all of my data sets. So I don't have to worry as a leader that things are getting left, right? We have full context when we dive in here. And just looking at the quick summary tab, I see maybe it's given this a score of 100. So that guarantees that I'm going to make sure that we don't have this, uh, anybody reaching out to this. Right here, I can see it steals cryptocurrency. I don't want to lose my Bitcoin, right? Uh, I can see we have some notes in Microsoft Sentinel and Elastic, right? So I've searched two SIMs at the same time. Uh, I can see that you know, there's information in virus total. 
I can also say, hey, who on my team has looked at this, right? And very quickly, I'm the only one who's looked at this. So I may want to send out a bulletin to my team in Slack. Hey, watch out for this, right? Um, and I can then go into my source solution and say, hey, this is malicious. I'm going to add it to a block list. And away we go. So I've made a high, high confidence decision, used all of the tools that we already have invested money in and uh, been able to uh, take care of this, uh, this malware. Right here, I'm looking at some logs, right? Again, a lot of times you can spend uh, significant time just looking through and not necessarily knowing what you're looking at. Right here, if I just hover over it, you know, Polarity lets me know, hey, this is our vulnerability scanner. Okay, well, it makes sense that it would have CVEs related to it, right? Um, right here, I can see this one's a darker red. Well, why is that darker red than this one? Oh, this one's on the known exploited vulnerabilities list. This one is not known to be exploited. Cool, so I'm gonna focus on the one that, you know, obviously has been exploited in the wild and take, take a look at that. And I can do this because we have our integration framework, which I mentioned has you know, 200 integrations out of the box. We actually have a significant number of closed source integrations uh, because our integrations here are open source. Uh, the product is not open source, but the integrations are. So I could dive into any of these integrations and see how did, how did we code that, right? If I wanted to customize them for my own environment, I have that capacity. And you can see where you're constantly upgrading and updating the, the um, integrations. So when you go through and you look at um, our GitHub site, you're able to see which of the different integrations we have uh, which are the tools that you already use. And we typically cover over 90% of people's platforms. And very quickly, I can say, hey, I can really up-level my team. I can create a number of, of Splunk integrations for my team using role-based access control and say, hey, you can look at these different data sets inside that. And here are the common searches you run. So I don't have to worry that my junior folks may not know how to run a specific search. They may not know the query language. Maybe they know one, but not another. They're going to be able to search all of them from one platform. And with that, I get the telemetry as part of that. I can see in the last you know, 30 days that I've done over 67,000 searches. And if every time I log into a platform, right, using multi-factor authentication, you know, going through the process and then running the search, if it only took me 30 seconds, which again, depending on the team and the tool, right, maybe, maybe it's 15 seconds, maybe it's a minute or two minutes, right? Um, but if it's just 30 seconds on average, I've saved over 500, almost 560 hours worth of time, right? So when you think about the teams being understaffed, right? If I can give you back in 30 days, that's, uh, oh man, what would that even work out to? It's like 13 uh, full-time employee weeks, right? Three, you know, 13 FTE weeks of, of 40 hours. Um, that's huge. And right here, I can see all of the tools that I have in my environment, get that real-time tool validation, right? Which tools are bringing back information, which ones are not. And please don't judge any of these tools by my environment because it's a, a demo environment. So different tools have different keys. Um, uh, but very quickly, you know, I can get that, that actual data and say, hey, these are the tools that are constantly bringing back great information for us. Here are the ones that are missing, right? Maybe we need to, maybe there's misconfigured, right? But let's make sure that we, we, we take a peek at them so we can know which ones are working and which ones aren't. I also get the ability to say which ones are working for which types of data sets, right? So, you know, as I go through here, I can get a quick peek and say, hey, these ones are working really well for us. Uh, maybe we need to investigate if this one is, is, is still worth the investment we've, we've made in it. I can see over time, when is my team doing the most searches? So if my team is 24 seven, I can get a quick idea of when do we need to put more human resources in, right? Where do I need to add that human investment? Because man, they are slammed during these times, right? And all of this is here for me right? Right out of the box. And if I look, you know, hey, let's just go look at the last, I don't think I've been talking for 60 minutes, but let's just kick that in. So in the last 60 minutes, right, I've done over 1,100 searches, right? And again, with that time frame of, of 30 seconds, as I've been going through this, I would have saved nine and a half hours of work. Uh, working with, with an analyst recently in a, a small closed environment, um, they only had five data sets that they were able to look at. But in that time, they still took about an hour per incident. Putting polarity in their hands, they were able to take that down to five minutes. So all of a sudden, all of the effort that they've been putting in in a day, they were able to knock out in an hour. And so they were able to significantly you know, increase their, their, their output, um, which gave them a lot more, uh, felt a, a lot uh, better feelings about their, their day when they went home uh, uh, for it. And with that, I'm just going to pivot back out here and ask if there were any questions from the audience.